Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to another Shabbat lesson uh, with Kai Yeshua. We thank the Most High Yah for being with us in these last days and times and allowing us to know him. To be covered by the blood of the Lamb during this season is such a great and fantastic blessing. And if we look at the landscape of what's going on right now, we see that right during the same Passover season in which every one of our households are covered by the blood of the Lamb, we see this Nas X video come out, right? Yes. And what does he put in the soles of his shoes? Blood. Blood. Why? Because we're at war right now. But many people still don't realize it. As we're seeking to be covered by the blood of the Lamb, Satan seeks to defile the Passover with blood sacrifices that are dedicated to the anti-Messiah. And these shoes are released right at the time of us commemorating the most perfect sacrifice. We're at spiritual war, the sons of darkness against the sons of Elohim. That's where we are right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a study and we're going to talk about this battle and this war between the flesh and the spirit, between that which is holy and that which is unholy. Because as we're in these days and times, we're going to see two things happen. The righteous are going to become exceeding righteous. They're going to become more upright. They're going to be more faithful. They're going to be more steadfast. They're going to seek more diligently the word of Yah. And then on the other side, we're going to see the goats who are on the left-hand side of the Most High. We're going to see wickedness begin to increase. Which side do we want to be on? That's a question we all have to decide for ourselves. Hallelujah. 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 So we're going to get into the study. But first, we're going to start with a prayer honoring the Most High Yah during this Pesach season. Blessed be thy name, Yehovah God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Yehoshua's name, we thank you for the Passover, O Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. We thank you for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We thank you that you have taught us to rid our houses of leaven, which is the body, Most High. The body is the temple and the house of the living Elohim. Yes. You taught us to rid ourselves of le leaven, rid ourselves of sin, to look in the mirror and reflect, O Heavenly Father, mm -hmm. upon the things that we ought not do, upon the things we ought not think, the things that we should not even uh, speak, O Heavenly Father. We must get rid of the leaven so that we can uh, be counted worthy of the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. We just thank you for this day to come out of the world, to fellowship together, Most High, to celebrate, to feast, to have a good time. Y'all, we just are so grateful for this wonderful fellowship that you have given us, Most High, and even the joy of your kingdom. We ask forgiveness, pardon for our iniquities, our sins, our transgressions, and our errors that we have done knowingly and unknowingly. We ask forgiveness for our ancestors and our forefathers and our foremothers from Adam and Eve all the way down to today. We ask forgiveness for the children. We ask forgiveness for our nation as a whole and for everything most high that seeks to afflict and accuse us. We cast it down in the name of your host, Hamashiach. We tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Let nothing by any means harm us, O most high. We pray that you would even uplift our people. And write your words in our hearts, Most High, and give us power in the gifts of the Royal Kai Kodesh, the Holy Spirit, in these last days. We give all praises, all honor, all glory unto you, now, always, and forevermore. In your Hoshua's name, hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Good very. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom, family. We are so excited to be with you for another Shabbat message. We want to first just say thank you to everyone. Thank you to everyone who supports, who um, leaves comments, who has purchased uh, books from the Hebrews White Scriptures Library. We are so appreciative of all the love, all of the support, the messages, the emails. We just really say thank you and we really Amen. love you. We're going to start with some Shabbat Shalom's. We're going to first acknowledge the people that we have that have come to celebrate Pesach and oh, yeah. unleavened bread with us. We have um, Brother Irene. We have. I'm, my mind just went blank. Now I'm looking at you. Brother Yehuda Shalom. Shalom and uh -huh. his family. Hallelujah. 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 
Isabel and Marcus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Of course, we have Natagus and Pamela. As Ema Samaya, my sister Lavatia, our son here, the sister artist. Sister Tracy. And Sister Tracy. <laughs> sister Tracy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we want to also give for our extended family that's not here with us physically, Dang. but are always with us from afar. So Shabbat Shalom to Brother Amit and his congregation in the UK. Amen. Shabbat Shalom to Lee G and Danielle. Shabbat Shalom to uh, Clarence and Angela Burns. Shabbat Shalom to Moses and Kiki. Shabbat Shalom to Ima Gwen. Glad that you are feeling better. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom to Sister Natasha. Shabbat Shalom to Sister Christelia. Sister Yakalia. Sister Itaya. Ita <laughs> Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom to Logic 1611. Shabbat Shalom to April Abu. Shabbat Shalom to Lenore Collins. Shabbat Shalom to Sister Gladys Wilson. Shabbat Shalom to the Hood family. Shabbat Shalom to the McCray family. Shabbat Shalom to Sister Tanisha. Shabbat Shalom, Anthony 2019. Shabbat Shalom, Ima Eliana. Shabbat Shalom to Ryan and Michelle Whitney. Shabbat Shalom to Brother Ron B. Shabbat Shalom to Sister Sheila. Shabbat Shalom to Amar Yehuda. Shabbat Shalom to Dana. Shabbat Shalom to Marcia. Shabbat Shalom to Tobiel Tobia. Shabbat Shalom to Elizabeth. Shabbat Shalom to Brother Yaakov. Shabbat Shalom to Raphael. Shabbat Shalom to, let me see. Shabbat Shalom to Brother Mark and Sister Lee. Brother Mark and Sister Lee. Um, Shabbat Shalom to Brandy McNeil. Shabbat Shalom to Brandy McNeil. Shabbat Shalom, Yikwa Emmett. Shabbat Shalom to Mikael Taylor. Shabbat Shalom to James, James Milton Holmes. Holmes. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom to Herbert. Shabbat Shalom, Harmony Group Fitness. Lisa Carson. Shabbat Shalom to Lisa Carson. Shabbat Shalom to Moria. Shabbat Shalom to Benjamin. Shabbat Shalom to. Z Metzger. Z Metzger. Shabbat Shalom to somebody from this recent video. Hold on. All right. And Shabbat Shalom to. No, somebody's name. But it wasn't me. Mike and Michael. Brother Michael. Shalom. Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. I think that's about it for right Hallelujah. Now. Hallelujah. Yeah. So we want to remind everyone that you can stop by our website, www.kayashua.com, select tithes and offerings, and select the yellow donate button where you may give your tithes, your offerings, your alms, however the most high leads you. Also, be a cash app, dollar sign Kayashua, and through Zelle, Kayashua at gmail.com. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Oh, praise to the Most High Yah. We're going to get started, okay? The sons of darkness versus the sons of Elohim. We're going to see how the flesh wars against the spirit. And many times what happens in our life when we're seeking to be obedient and faithful and walk according to, you know, the commandments and the faith of Yehoshua. Sometimes you in, in, um, encounter tribulation. Sometimes bad things happen to us. But then we say, well, how could this be if we're in the will of the Most High? Well, the reason why is because the spirit is warring against the flesh. And so a lot of times when we're facing tribulation and so-called bad things happen to us in the flesh, it's actually the opposite that Yah is doing to us and wants to accomplish for us in the spirit. So, for example... When Abraham and Sarah spent decades of their lives barren and unable to produce a child, was it because Yah was angry with them? Or did he have something better in store for them? Actually, the opposite. Because Abraham, what does Abraham mean? A father of many nations. 
So he changed his name from Abram to Abraham, yet he didn't have all of these children yet. So he had to go through this season in his life of, uh, of affliction or of tribulation in the flesh, but actually in the spirit, Yah was doing the opposite. He was doing something so much greater than he could even imagine. The same thing as we're going to go through today. We're going to go through the scriptures. We're going to look at David. We're going to look at Joseph. We're going to look at uh, Moses. We're going to look at Peter, Paul, and of course, Yehoshua HaMashiach. When they faced tribulations and afflictions and they were walking the straight path, it wasn't that the Most High was angry with them. It's actually he was doing the opposite in their lives. He was accomplishing something much greater. And we need to remember these things in the last days and times. As tribulations seem to increase, is it that Yah is mad with us or are we being refined in the fire? But if we're like uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Mishael, uh, Hananiah, and Azariah, if we are like them, when we go through the fire, we're not even burned. The smell of fire won't even be on us. He brought our people through the water. None of them drowned. And Yehoshua even walked above it on top of it and didn't sink. So when we go through fire and water and we face these tribulations in life, it's actually that that temptation and that tribulation is the opposite of what Yah is going to accomplish. Before we get started, I just want to show where we are in this point in day and time. We are celebrating the Passover. So um, we're during the Feast of Unleavened Bread which the Passover started on March 31st, which is Aviv, the 14th at even. And the official first day was April the 1st. And now we're at the time of Yehoshua's resurrection. So let me uh, write here. We're actually... The third day that Yehoshua rose, he was killed in the midst of the week, as it says in the book of Daniel, chapter nine, I believe, chapter uh, verse 25 or 26. It says the Messiah would be cut off during the midst of the week, which we know as Wednesday or Yom Revi'i, the midst of the week. He was killed. He rose in three days and three nights. So Thursday would be Passover. Friday would be the uh, second day of unleavened bread. And then that Shabbat, which is today, is that resurrection time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a resurrection season. So Yehoshua had to go through affliction, which to the naked eye looked like he died. He was not the Messiah that killed him. How could he be the Messiah? And the Messiah is supposed to live forever. That's how it would have looked according to the flesh. But in the spirit, Yah did something so much greater. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Today is Aviv, the 17th, Yehoshua's resurrection. Let's get started. We're going to go to the book of Revelations. We're going to read actually chapter 22 in Revelations. Um, and we're going to read in Hebrew and English as we get started. We're going to the Testament of Yahshua. Or if you don't have the Testament of Yahshua, any book of Revelations chapter 22 is fine. Second, let me find this verse. Yes, Revelations 22 and 10. That's where we're going to start at. Revelations 22 and 10. It reads. Wayomir Eli, Al Takton, Et Devre Nevuat Hasefir. And he said unto me, Do not close or seal the words of this book, the prophecies of this book. Hase Ki, Quaruf 
Hamoe, for the time is at hand. Go ahead and read. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 10. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. Hachomes, Yosef, Lachmos, Wahatame, Yosef, Lehitame, Wahakazik, Wahakazadik, Yosef, Lehizadek, Wahakwadosh, Yosef, Lehikwadesh. Read. Verse 11. He that is unjust. Let him be unjust still. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. This is what we're seeing. The people whose heart is not right, you're starting to see an increase in wickedness. Thus we have little Nas X, where he can come out all the way. Not only was he living uh, uh, the lifestyle of the sodomite, but now he's increased that wickedness and devoted himself entirely and probably... Uh, he probably he cannot repent at this point. That's reprobate, reprobation. Reprobate mind is a state of mind where you are beyond repair. Mm -hmm. So he takes shoes and puts 666 on them and fills the souls of them with human blood. Mm -hmm. So those who are unjust are actually, it says Yosef, from the word Yosef, which means to increase, to add an additional Increase in unrighteousness is what we're seeing. Sorry, so start over again and read that verse. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse mm -hmm. 11. Mm -hmm. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. Mm. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. But those who are righteous are increasing in their righteousness. We're seeing what's going on and we're setting ourselves apart. Thus, we're coming more and more out of the world and we're reflecting more on the word of God. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Verse 12. Wehini by my hair, and behold, I come quickly. Uskari, Sakari, and my reward, E.T., is with me. Le shalem laish, to repay. To make whole, to restore to every man, kama asehu, according unto his works. Go ahead. Verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, mm. and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. He's coming quickly, and he's going to reward everyone according to what we do or don't do. So this is the season of separation between wheat and tears, between holy and unholy, just and unjust. 13. Ani ha aleph where ha tau. I am the aleph and the tau. I am the first and the last. Ha rosh where ha sof, the beginning, the head, and the ending. Ha rishon where ha akaron, the beginning and the ending. Verse 13. I am the Aleph and Tau, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Amen. 14. Ashre. Hamkavsin. Happy are they that enter at ha Salmotehem. Hmm. Lemaan Yihye Lehem Rishyon Baet Hakayim. Uba'u ha'ira derek ha'sha'arim. Blessed or happy are those who can enter into Salmotehim. I think they're dwelling places um, and are able to eat etz ha'kayim, the tree of life, and enter into the gates of the city. Go ahead. Verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Mm that they may have right to the tree of life mm. and may enter in through the gates into the city. Amen. Verse 15. Umekuts and or but outside Lair, the city, Hakelavin are the dogs. 
Wahamakshafim, Wahazonim, the fornicators, Waham Ratzkin, the murderers, Waha Ovde, and the servants of Ha Elilim, the gods, the idols, Wakal Ohev Shekwer, and all and everyone who loves lies. Well, or say him and do them or perform them. Go ahead. Verse 15. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Mm. And the last verse, verse 16. Ani Yehoshua shalakti et hamalaki. I am Yehoshua and I send my angel. Lehair, Lehaid to testify. Lekem et ele bifne haquelot to testify these things unto you before the assemblies. Anoki Shoresh Dawid. I am the root Shoresh of Dawid. Wetolato and his descendant. Kokav Noga. I am the star, Hashakar, mm -hmm. the morning star. Go ahead. Verse 16. I, Yehoshua, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the assemblies. I am the root and the offspring of Dawid and the bright and morning star. Hallelujah. So let those who are just continue to walk justly. Let those who are righteous continue to do so. And those who are not, you're going to see them increase in evil in these days and times. And this is exactly what we're seeing and experiencing. So now we're going to get into our study. Let's turn to the book of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians. This Galatians in Hebrew. Galatians 5, let's start at verse 16. The book of Galatians chapter 5, beginning at verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Ruach, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, if we're walking in the Ruach, we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. But the king of the flesh, who is Satan, he starts to then come against us to withstand us. Just as Jehoshua came to do something very spiritual, he went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And he was afflicted in his flesh. By fasting, and then the adversary came to contend against him and his time of weakness. But actually, that was the moment when Yehoshua usurped authority and all power of the earthly realm from the devil himself. <coughs> Go ahead. Verse 16, I'm sorry, 17. For the flesh lusteth against the Ruach, mm -hmm. and the Ruach against the flesh. The Ruach is against the flesh, the flesh is against the Ruach. <laughs> and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. When Adam was first created, was he created by, by flesh? Yeah. What do y'all say? No. No. <laughs> What do you say? By the, by the clay. Mm -hmm. Flesh came about a little bit more after. He was molded by clay. And Yehoshua breathed, or the Father breathed the breath of life into that clay. Who was the first created of flesh? Eve. Kawa. But they were one flesh, so they became one. So, once Satan enticed them to be able to sin, they were made originally in the image of Elohim, 
Then Satan began to rule over their flesh. And because when they were encountered by the devil, they did not call on the name of Yehoshua. They did not call on the name. Satan was able to deceive them. That's why now the opposite in order to break these curses is we have to call on the name. That's why when we call on the name of the Most High and of his son, we have deliverance. Because that's what Adam and Eve did not accomplish when they were tempted. They didn't call out to Yah. They had some stranger come unto them and entice them not to keep the laws of the Most High. And instead of calling out to Yah to ask him what they should do, they just listened. So now for us to be saved, we have to call on his name. So out of those trials and those temptations, Yah shows us how to get deliverance. So just like Abraham, first he had, uh, and Sarah, they couldn't conceive. It was so that they could eventually be the father and mother of many, of, of a multitude. So when we are encountered by the adversary and we go through fire and water, it's actually the opposite that Yah is trying to bring about. Go ahead. Verse 18, mm -hmm. but if ye be led of the Ruach, ye are not under the Torah. If you are led of the Ruach, you are not under the Torah. Does it say if you are led under the, of the Ruach, you are not to obey the Torah? Mm -hmm. What does this mean? Death doesn't have power over you? You're not under judgment. When you're under the law... That means that you're under judgment. But when we keep the law, we're not under it. Okay? Go ahead. We are in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 19. So when we're walking in the spirit, at times, these works of the flesh come to attack us. Even if we're walking in the Ruach. Go ahead. Now the works of the flesh are manifest... Which are these? What's the first one? Adultery. Adultery. Let's think of Joseph. Was Joseph chaste? Yes. yes. Did he keep himself holy? Yes. yes. What came to withstand him? Adultery. The spirit of adultery. Did it break Joseph? No. It actually did the opposite. It made him that much more holy, and Yah was able to elevate him from a slave to a king. Fornication. Go ahead. Fornication. Mm -hmm. Uncleanness. Mm -hmm. Lasciviousness. Right. Idolatry. Idolatry. Let's think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. What happened to them? Why? Because they wouldn't worship the image. Because they wouldn't worship the image. So they were living right. And many other Israelites probably did worship the image. Right, it was the mark of the beast. That was like king. That's right. It, the uh, the statue I think was sixty cubits tall, six cubits wide, and there's another six. Uh, that's involved, and I gotta look at the story again. But it actually was a mark of the beast in days of old. King, um, and they were thrown in the fire, even though they were obedient. Why? Because Yah was gonna show that they were pure. So when they were thrown in the fire. Yah actually used that fire to burn up those who threw him in. So when we're faithful throughout the trials that we encounter in life, the Most High actually does the opposite. The ones who threw him in were burned. And the ones who were righteous were purified. And then when they came out of the fire purified, then everybody had to bow down to the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hallelujah. So out of that idolatry, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were allowed and were able to get that whole nation, that whole, not just nation, that whole empire to bow down and recognize the Most High Yah. Let's go. Galatians 5, verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft. Witchcraft. Elijah the prophet. Who did he have to withstand against? Jezebel. 
Jezebel, Jezebel the witch. Jezebel the witch killed many prophets and then established 450 false prophets. And all of them came to withstand against little old Eliyahu. But Yah used it as an encounter to get him to overcome all of the prophets of Baal and Jezebel herself. To the point later on where Eliyahu started to call fire down from heaven to burn up the servants of Ahab who came, kept coming to arrest him and kill him. So out of these tribulations and out of these trials, actually Yah does the opposite. And for all the people who agreed with Ahab and Jezebel and did not stand up for the, uh, for the name of Yehoah, what happened to them? Eliyahu prayed for famine. Because they remained silent at the killing of the prophets. So you see how Yah does the opposite. Hallelujah. Go ahead, read verse 20. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. Now look at all of these works of the flesh. And there's only nine fruits of the spirit, but there's a lot more fruits of the flesh. <laughs> Adultery, one. Fornication, two. Uncleanness, three. Lasciviousness, four. Idolatry, five. Witchcraft, six. Hatred, seven. Variance, eight. Emulations, nine. Wrath, ten. Strife, eleven. Seditions, twelve. Heresies, thirteen. Envyings, fourteen. Murders, fifteen. Drunkenness, sixteen. Reveling, seventeen. Seventeen works of the flesh. So we got 17 works of the flesh. And how many fruits of the spirit? Nine. And nine fruits of the spirit. What does that show us? That shows us that evil usually always outnumbers the righteous. But the righteous is so much more powerful. And lies come and they pass away. But the things that come from Yah endure forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Verse 21. Envying, mm -hmm. murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such the like. Of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, mm -hmm. that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Elohim. But the fruit of the Ruach is love, one, joy, two, shalom, three, long suffering, four, gentleness, five, goodness, six, faith, seven, meekness, eight, temperance, nine. Against such there is no Torah. Mm -hmm. And they that are Mashiachs have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. They have crucified the flesh. So when the flesh comes to attack us, we crucify it. And thus we have spiritual war. The war of the flesh against the spirit. The sons of darkness versus the sons of light. So let's go to it. Let's look at uh, some of these different temptations that arose. Let's go to um, Adam. Let's go to the uh, book of Genesis. Better sheet, chapter 3. Genesis, chapter 3. Let's look at verse 17. We know that Satan deceived Adam and Eve, and now he's given a punishment unto Adam. Okay. The book of Genesis chapter 3, beginning at verse 17. Mm -hmm. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, mm -hmm. and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, 
Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. Thorns also and thistles shall it break forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for the dust thou art, and unto the dust shalt thou return. Let's examine this punishment. It's actually Adam's blessing at the same time. And verse 17, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake, in sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. And the sweat of thy face Shalt thou eat thy bread till thou return unto the ground, for out of it thou was taken, for the dust thou art, unto the dust thou shalt return. Let's start in reverse and start at verse 19. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread. Meaning now Adam has to work, and he has to work hard in order to pay off his debt. The reason why he has to work, work was his punishment, because now Adam and all of his descendants have to pay off the debt that Yehoshua is going to pay for them through his blood. So to be worthy of this blood sacrifice that Yehoshua is willing to do for them, they are in debt, so they have to serve. But what's more attractive uh, to a woman than a man who's about his business, who's successful, who is a, 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 a good earner, a good provider, isn't that what makes a man desirable? His punishment is actually his blessing. When he submits to that punishment, it actually makes him a man of renown, a man that is esteemed. And in general, the women tend to overlook a man who is not about accomplishing anything. A man may be poor, but he may have, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, ambition. And that's different. He's going places. He's just at a certain point in his life. But a man without ambition and that is not doing anything and will not accomplish anything generally tends to be someone that is not desirable. So his punishment, when he submits to it, is actually his blessing. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth unto thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. When you're sick, let's just put it this way. What's the healthiest diet that you can eat? Soup salad. Vegan or vegetarian? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you take herbs, doesn't that heal you? Yes. You can be sick. You can eat all kinds of foods. The Most High says you can eat anything. You know, he gives us the dietary law, and it's perfect. But if we encounter any uh, infirmities, sicknesses, or diseases, when we eat from the herb of the field, isn't that for our blessing? Doesn't that promote healing? When you're not feeling good, don't most of us take herbal teas? Don't we take herbal tinctures, herbal and natural remedies? That's actually our blessing when we submit to it. So you see that it's actually the opposite that Yah is accomplishing through the temptations in the spirit, in the flesh. Y'all yeah. follow me? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Shalom. 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 All right. All right. Let's, um, let's now go to the book of Romans chapter 5. The book of Romans chapter 5. And verse 13.
The book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 13. The book of Romans 5 and 13. We're going to see that what Satan meant for harm to destroy Adam and the punishment and curses associated with it, Yah actually intended the opposite. Let's go. For until the Torah, sin was in the world. Mm -hmm. But sin is not imputed when there is no Torah. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moshe. So this punishment brought death all the way from Adam, the days of Adam, Adam to the time of Moses. And then when Moses came, Yah gave the Torah. Go ahead. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So all of the descendants of Adam didn't actually necessarily sin as bad as Adam and Eve did. There was a lot of people who were righteous and had they been in that same position may not have succumbed to that temptation, yet they all had to face death. Go ahead. Even over them that had that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. They didn't do the same things Adam did, but they still had to be punished. Go ahead. Who is the figure of him that was to come? Mm -hmm. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead. If through the offense of many of one many be dead, through Adam's sin, all of us now have to die until Yehoshua comes back the second time. Go ahead. Much more the grace of Elohim and the gift by grace, which is by one man, by one man Yehoshua HaMashiach, hath abounded unto many. Through Yehoshua, eternal life can abound to many. If by one sin and death can come to many, then by supreme righteousness, life can come to many. So Yah takes that punishment and makes the opposite out of it. Go ahead. Verse 16. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. Mm -hmm. 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one through Adam's offense death reigned by one much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in the life by one, Yehoshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So Yehoshua being the second Adam actually reversed the punishment and the chastisement. Hallelujah. The flesh wars against the spirit. The spirit wars against the flesh. Go ahead. Verse 18. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even, even so, so, by the, the righteousness, righteousness of one, one the free, free gift, gift came, came upon all men unto justification of life. life. Go ahead. For as by one man's disobedience, many, many were, were made sinners. sinners. We're all now born into sin. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. So through one man's perfect obedience, we can all be made righteous. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Let's, let's look at another story. Let's go, let's look at, we talked about Abraham and Joseph. Let's talk about David. Let's go to, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 30. First Samuel chapter 30. Let's look at what happened here. First Samuel chapter 30. David is a righteous man, yet he's a fugitive. He's on the FBI's most wanted list in Israel by Saul. Shaul the king has him the number one wanted man in all of Israel. And he did nothing wrong. He didn't even do anything wrong. And he had the opportunity to take Saul out on several occasions and always put the gun down. He said, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to take you out like that. Because mm -hmm. you guys anointed. Right. Mm -hmm. Then he had to go on and run all over again. Mm -hmm. It's like having bounty hunters track you down. Right. And then you get the upper hand on them. 
and you let them go, and yet they still come back after you, like the rock on Fast and Furious, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, chapter 30. We are in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30, beginning at verse 1. And it came to pass, when Dawid and his men were come to Zik Ziklag. Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekim... The Amalekim are the Amalekites. So David comes to this place called Ziklag where he and his family and his all his men and their families had settled and they found a place to hide from Saul. Go ahead. That the Amalekim had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. But David and his men were out on a mission and while they were gone, the Amalekites found the families of all the soldiers and all of their goods and their spoils. Go ahead. Verse 2. And had taken the women captives. They took their wives. That were therein. They slew not any, either great or small. But they didn't kill any of them. Go ahead. But so, then, again, you have this war, but Yah is in the midst of it. He doesn't allow them to kill anyone. But they did take them captive. Go ahead. But carried them away and went on their way. Hmm. So let's see what happens. So Dawid and his men came to the city. And behold, it was burned with fire. So imagine going out to work and when you come back home, you're expecting to see your family, your wife and children, and you come back home and your house is burned down. And then you're looking to see, is everybody okay? And you're running through each room in the house and you're looking, right. calling out, and nobody's answering. Mm. Go ahead. It was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. And now there's no sign of anyone anywhere and you just don't know what to do. Go ahead. Then Dawid and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you ever cried so hard in your life to the point where you just couldn't cry anymore? Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine experiencing that. But not only that, all of your close friends and families all having to cry that same way at the same time. Imagine the tribulation. These are servants of the Most High. These are men and women of Yah. These were those who were walking obediently. These are those who were walking faithfully. And yet this tragedy happens to them. But it gets worse. Let's see. We have the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30, verse 5. Mm -hmm. And Dawid's two wives were taken captive. Mm. Akinoam. Akinoam, the Yisraeli, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmeline. Both his wives were taken. Go ahead. And Dawid was greatly distressed. For he was so distressed. He didn't know what to do. He couldn't cry anymore. That means probably all of his strength dried up. And he was a mighty man of Yah. Go ahead. He was anointed by Samuel. Samuel, the prophet by this time, is, has died. So it looks like, man, your anointing was fake. Didn't Samuel anoint you to be king? Didn't he choose you out of your eight brothers? And then and, and anoint you the least, the youngest of all? Now that looks suspect. So when you have a calling in your life and Yah chooses you to do a thing and then you encounter a tribulation or a hardship, then people start to look at you and doubt your calling. Go ahead. All right, verse 6. And that week was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him. Not only that, but now his close friends and brothers, now they're actually speak, speaking about killing David. So imagine you go to work and your, 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 your closest family members, they all spend the night at your house. Y'all go out, y'all come back, and then your wives and children are missing. And then 
Your close loved ones then want to kill you on top of that. This is the flesh against the spirit. This is when we go through the fire and we go through the water, but let's see how David handled this circumstance. Go ahead. And David was greatly distressed. For the people spake of stoning they him. They wanted to kill Dawid. Go ahead. Because the soul of all the people was grieved, mm. every man for his sons and for his daughters. But Dawid. What did Dawid do? Encouraged himself. He encouraged himself. Oh, yeah. In Yehoah his Elohim. Do you encourage yourself when you're feeling down? Do you strengthen yourself and dig that much deeper in your faith in the Most High Yah? Or do you fold under the pressure? The flesh wars against the spirit. The sons of darkness versus the sons of Elohim. Let him who is unjust be unjust still. Let him who is righteous, let him be righteous still. So the righteous encountered this tribulation and he chose to be more righteous. His close companion, they was, thinking, they was talking about killing him. And he sought y'all that much the more. Let's go. We are in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30, verse 7. And Dawid said to Abiathar, the priest. The first thing he does, he seeks his elder. Mm -hmm. He seeks the priest. And David himself was a holy and anointed man. But in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every matter be established. Amen. When two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. Right. So when you're going through this, do you call on someone else righteous or godly to help you through this situation, to pray with you, to fast with you? Go ahead. All right, verse 7. And that we said to Abiathar the priest, Achimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And um, Abiathar brought thither the, eph the ephod to Dawid. And Dawid inquired at Yehoah. So some people, when they go through the tribulation and the trouble, they give up on the Most High. Dawid saw them that much more. The flesh wars against the spirit. The spirit wars against the flesh. When we are chastised, when we submit to that chastisement, it actually becomes our blessing. We're going to see how this became David's blessing. Go ahead. Verse 8. And Dawid inquired at Yehoah, saying, Shall I pursue after this truth? Did he just say, let's just strap up, let's roll, let's, let's go out, let's go find whoever did this and kill him? Or did he ask the Most High first? Mm. How many of us lean on our own understanding? Proverbs 3, trust in Yehovah with all thine heart and lean not upon thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. This is what David is actually manifesting. Go ahead. All right, verse 8. And Dawid inquired at Yehovah, saying, Shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. What would have happened if David didn't believe? Sometimes we pray and Yah gives us the answer. Right. But if you don't have faith, you'll just say, Well, I don't I can't believe it. I, I don't know. How can I how can I overcome that? You prayed and you asked for the answer. Yah gives the answer, yet some people we're still not fulfill and, and perform what Yah said to do. Because that flesh start battling against the spirit. So that 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 fear starts to overcome the faith. But Dawi was faithful. There was no place for fear in his heart. Neither should there be for us. The only fear we should have is towards the most high. Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Verse 9. So Dawid went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. So him and 600 soldiers are going to war against Amalek. 
But along the way, his numbers get cut down again. One third of his soldiers fall away. Did David give up because people fell away? No. Will you give up when people fall away? No. Or will you pursue Yah that much more? Will you inquire of him more? Right. What happens when people fall away? Do we stop serving Yah? Do we stop praise and worship? No. Or do we do it that much more? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why David was chosen because he was a man after Yah's own heart. One third fall away, just like one third fall away in heaven. Let's go. Verse 10. But that we pursued he and 400 men for 200, 200 abode, abode behind, behind which were so faint that they could not go over the brook. They were so faint they couldn't even fight anymore. But the show must go on. You must continue the fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go. First Samuel chapter 30 verse 11. And they found in Mitzrayim. An Egyptian. In the field. And brought him to Dawid. And gave him bread. And he did eat. And they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his ruach came again to him. For he had eaten no bread, nor drunk any water three days and three nights. So now you have an Egyptian, the same thing. He's afflicted. Let's see what Yah does with his affliction. He was left to die. But he encounters men of the, of the Most High Yah. And now his affliction actually becomes a blessing because he was faithful. Go ahead. Verse 13. And that we said unto him, To whom belongest thou? And whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Mitzrayim, servant to an Amalekite. So he was a servant to an Amalekite, a Roman, an Edomite. Go ahead. And my master left him. And his master left him. See the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. So his master treated him badly, yet he was willing to give his life to serve his master. Mm -hmm. He gets sick and his master throws him away in the trash. But that affliction actually becomes the blessing. Go ahead. And my master left me because three days ago I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of Kerithim and upon the coast which belonged to Yehuda and upon the south of Caleb and we burned Ziklag with fire. He was one of the men responsible for burning David's camp. Let's see how this becomes the blessing. <laughs> and Dawid said to him, Canst thou bring me down to this company? Did David kill him? No. Did he curse him out and say, you heathen, this and that? He was wise. Right. Because he inquired of the Most High Yah. So he had the proper heart. Go ahead. And he said, swear unto me by Elohim that thou wilt neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. And I will bring thee down to this company. Mm -hmm. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth. Eating, eating and, and drinking. drinking dancing. And, and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines. Just like the days of Noah. Wow. Eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. The tribulation falls upon our people. And the son of David is going to come back and exact judgment against them while they're partying and reveling. And out of the land of Yehuda. Verse 17. And Dawid smote them from the twilight evening until the evening of the next day. He waxed that behind all day and all night, tore them up. <laughs> 24 hours straight. Wow. <laughs> 
24 hours. Waxing. We tired after one round of boxing, man. <laughs> <laughs> one three minute round, and you're like, I gotta sit down. <laughs> <laughs> one game of 21. <laughs> We are in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30, verse 17. And Dawid smote them from the twilight even until the evening of the next day. And there escaped not a man of them save 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. Mind you, these Amalekites are only alive because Saul never killed them. He broke the commandment when he should have killed them to begin with. Mm -hmm. So now David is being afflicted for the Inaction of Saul yet again. But this is for a higher purpose. Go ahead, verse 18. And that we recovered all that the Mela Queen had carried away, and, and David that we rescued, rescued his, his two wives. wives. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they recovered everyone and everything that the devil took away. And then some because they took the spoil that the Amalekites had also from the other cities. They destroy. Amen. So sometimes to get an increase, you have to go through a decrease. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to prune that vine in order for it to grow back more fruitful. One third of the men fell away. But y'all restored that too. 19. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great. Neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. Dawid recovered all. So, David, Dawid lost everybody and was left alone with just him and the Most High. And his closest companions wanted to kill him. But this was for a higher purpose because in the flesh, everybody left him. But in the spirit, Yah was going to bring all of Israel to David. He makes him king right after this. This was his final test before he was crowned king of Judah. Let's go now to quickly uh, 1 Samuel 31. And you'll see that's where Saul dies because he seeks the witch. So while this is happening to David, Saul, this is his last test. He, while David has his test, Saul has his test simultaneously. David is in distress. Saul is in distress. David seeks Yah. Mm -hmm. Saul seeks the witch of Endor. Right. Mm -hmm. Saul dies and falls in battle. That's the end of 1 Samuel. We pick up at 2 Samuel. David finds out in chapter 1 that Saul and Jonathan died. By chapter 2, let's see what happens. 2 Samuel 2. Alright. The book of 2 Samuel, chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. And it came to pass after this. After these things, after what we just read, go ahead. That we inquired of Jehovah. He inquires of Yah again. So now he's got everyone restored and he has more of an abundance of gold and silver. Did he say, man, I'm good? <laughs> did he get comfortable or did he continue, he continue. to seek Yah even in his abundance? Hallelujah. So in his, uh, in his lack, he served and inquired of the Most High Yah. Now in his abundance, he inquires and serves the Most High Yah. We have to serve him and inquire him of him when it's good and when it's bad, when it's bitter and when it's sweet. Our faith has to be unmoved. Go ahead. And it came to pass after this that we inquired of Yahuwah, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Yehuda? And Yehovah said unto him, Go up. And Dawid said, Whither shall I go up? And he said, 
unto Kebron. So that we went up thither and his Kebron, if I know correctly, it might mean like friends or brethren. Kaber means uh, friend or close. This might mean brethren. So he was at a place where he was alone to inherit his brethren all over again. Mm. Go ahead. Verse 2. So that we went up thither and his two wives also. Akinoa. Akinoa, the Yisraeli, and Abigail, the Baal's wife, the Carmeli. And his men that were with him did Dawid bring up every man with his household. And they dwelt in the cities of Kebron. Here comes the blessing. Here comes the blessing. Here comes the blessing. And the men of Yehuda came. And there they anointed Dawid king Hallelujah. over the house of Yehudah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they told Dawid, saying, that, that the men of Yabesh Gilead were they that buried Shaul. Shaul is buried in the ground. Dawid is made king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what happened to him in the flesh was devastating. And he was righteous. So sometimes when the flesh is warring against the spirit or the, the sons of darkness is warring against the sons of Elohim, you go through a tribulation, you go through a season, you go through the valley, you go through the fire, you go through the water. But if you inquire and you seek Yah that much the more, that's your blessing. The opposite is what Yah is doing. David had to lose everything and everyone to gain everything and everyone. Let's look at another story. There's so many. Let's look at Hannah, the mother of Mary, mother of Yehoshua. Let's go to the Gospel of James. Chapter 1. Or maybe chapter 4, I think. There's so many stories. It may not be in that book. We have the other books for them, the gold or silver, because I don't think it's in those blue ones for them. But if not, you know, it'll be on the screen here. The Gospel of James, chapter one. This is right before the New Testament. We have the book of James, and then we have the Gospel of James. The Gospel of James is right before the New Testament. We're going to look at the story of Miriam, or Mary, the mother of Yehoshua, and how her parents were righteous, but they couldn't conceive either. Right? Let's go. The Gospel of James, chapter 1. Mm -hmm. In the history of the twelve tribes of Israel, it is written that there was one Yehoah queen, exceeding rich, and he offered his gifts twofold, saying, That which is of my super superfluity, superfluity, my excess, I have more than I need, shall be for the whole people. So, since I have more than I need, my excess I'm going to share with my people. So he was a righteous man and he had a good heart, a giving and a willing heart. Go ahead. That which is of my superfluity shall be for the whole people, and that which is for my forgiveness shall be for Yehoah, for a propitiation a unto propitiation me. Propitiation unto to me. make an atonement for. Go ahead, for me. Mm -hmm. Now the great day of Yehoah drew nigh. And the children of Israel offered their gifts. Mm -hmm. And Reuben stood over against him, saying, It is not lawful for thee to offer thy gifts first, for as much as thou hast gotten no seed in Israel. So Jehoiakim is a righteous man. He's a wealthy man, and he's a giving man, yet he has no child. So here comes this man named Reuben, and they're at the house of God. They're at the temple offering gifts. 
And this man, Ray Uben, says, get out the way, boy. You ain't got no children, so God don't really love you. Let me make my offerings, and you stand out the way. And he just elbows him out the way. And yet, when he makes his offerings, he's not just offering for himself, but he's offering for everyone else in need. The, the flesh wars against the spirit. Verse 3. And Jehoiakim was sore grieved. There's his tribulation. Now he's upset. Why, Yah? I thought I was righteous. Why do these bad things happen to me? Go ahead. And went unto the record of the twelve tribes of the people, saying, I will look upon the record of the twelve tribes of Israel, whether I only have not gotten seed in Israel. So now he's doing a, a thorough search of the scriptures to see if only he has encountered something like this. And he searched and found concerning all the righteous that they had raised up seed in Israel. Mm. And he remembered the patriarch of Abraham, how in the last days Elohim gave him a son, even Yitzchak. So he was able to see that if he abides faithful, Yah was faithful to Abraham and answered him in the same way. Go ahead. And Jehovah Queen was sore grieved and showed not himself to his wife, but betook himself into the wilderness and pitched his tent there and fasted 40 days and 40 mm -hmm. nights, mm -hmm. saying within himself, I will not go down either for the meat, for the drink, until for Yehoah, meat or for, for meat drink. or for drink, until Yahoah, my Elohim, visit me, and my prayer shall be unto me meat and drink. Imagine living in your mansion, because he's a rich man and he has it all like that, and he leaves the comforts of his home and pitches a tent in the wilderness and fasts and doesn't take any food with him. And he says, my prayer is going to be my food. This is what it meant when Dawi said he inquired of Yah that much more in his distress. This is an extreme example of that. Extreme. They both were extreme examples because they were going to kill Dawi. And all of their family members were gone. Mm -hmm. Let's go to chapter 2. Now let's see his wife. Go ahead. We are in and then he didn't even tell his wife, right? Right. He just disappears, and his wife doesn't even know what happened. <laughs> we are in the Gospel of James, chapter 2. Uh -huh. Now, his wife, Kana, lamented with two lamentations and bewailed herself with two bewailing, saying, I will bewail my widowhood. And I will be well, my child. So now she is doubly afflicted. So now she thinks her husband has died and that she's now a widow. And then she is barren and has no child. This is what it, Mitzrayim means in Hebrew. In Hebrew. It means double distress. That's what Egypt means. Double distress. So they're, in a sense, in Egypt. Okay. Double distress. Verse 2. And the great day of Yehoah drew nigh, and Yehudith, her handmaid, said unto her. So now she got a servant, a worker, someone who works for her. And let's see how they humiliate her. Her handmaid said unto her, How long humblest thou thy soul? The great day of Jehovah hath come, and it is not lawful for thee to mourn. But take this headband, which the mistress of my work gave me, and it is not lawful for me to put it on, for as much as I am a handmaid, and it hath a mark of royalty. And Cana said, Get thee from me. Lo, I will not do so. And Jehovah hath greatly humbled me. For adventure, one gave it to thee in subtlety, and thou art come to make me partaker in thy sin. She's like, I'm here mourning for my husband and mourning that I'm a widow and barren, and you want me to go to the club with you? 
I'm supposed to put this on now and go out and hang out and party? Like, what? And Yehuda said, how shall I curse thee, seeing Yehoah hath shut up thy mm. womb to give thee no fruit in Israel? Mm. A third tribulation. Now the person who's close to her, mm -hmm. the only person she has left, turns on her too. But these are righteous people. And sometimes these things are tribulations where the flesh, those 17 works of the flesh that we covered, they come to, to war against the fruits of the spirit. They try to get you to turn away like David's men fell away. Mm -hmm. They try to get you to fall away. The flesh wars against the spirit. The spirit wars against the flesh. The flesh is trying to get you to fall away. That's why in the last days it says there will be a great falling away. And that's what you're seeing happening in the landscape. You're seeing people fall away. You're seeing things you've never seen before in Israel. Mm -hmm. New abominations you're seeing. Yeah. New wickedness. New confusion and chaos. Y'all said these things would happen, but let he who is righteous remain righteous, and let he who is unjust remain unjust. Go ahead. Verse 3. And Cana was sore grieved and mourned with a great mourning because she was reproached by all the tribes of Israel. And now everyone hates her, yet they helped feed so many and did so many for so many people. Probably some of the same people they did stuff for, now they turn on them too. And coming to herself, she said, what shall I do? Let me turn away from the Most High? Let me fall away? Or did she inquire of Jehovah diligently, just like David did? Read. I will pray with weeping I unto Jehovah. Weeping unto Jehovah. My Elohim, that he that visit he me. Visit me. Amen. And our weakness, Yah, has made strong. Mm -hmm. And she put off her mourning garments and adorned her head and put on her bridal garments. And about the ninth hour, she went down into the garden to walk there. And she saw a laurel tree and sat down underneath it and besought Jehovah, saying, O Elohim of our fathers, bless me and hearken unto my prayer, as thou didst bless the womb of Sarah and gavest her a son, even Yitzchak. Hold on one second. Okay. There you go. Chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Chapter 3. The Gospel of James, chapter 3. And looking up to the heaven, she espied a nest of sparrows in the laurel tree and made a lamentation within herself, this saying... This is pretty sad. Let's read this. Woe unto me who begot me, and what womb brought me forth for I am become a curse before the children of Israel, and I am reproached, and they have mocked me forth out of the temple of Jehovah. Mm, this is all for a reason that she couldn't perceive. When we're going through these valleys, it's really hard to perceive how Yah could ever use these things. They mocked her in the temple, but her blessing would abide in the temple. Let's go. Verse 2. Woe unto me, unto what am I likened? I am not likened unto the fowls of heaven, for even the fowls of the heaven are fruitful before thee, O Adonai. Woe unto me, unto what am I likened? I am not likened unto the beasts of the earth, for even the beasts of the earth are fruitful before thee, O Adonai. Mm. Woe unto me, for what am I likened? I am not likened unto these waters, for even these waters are fruitful before thee, O Adonai. Woe unto me, unto what am I likened? I am not likened unto this earth, for even this earth bringeth forth her fruits in due season, mm. and blesseth thee, O Adonai. Mm. Chapter 4. And the spirit wars against the flesh. And when you're in your purpose and you're walking in righteousness and these tribulations come upon you, if you abide faithful, 
it's actually the opposite that Yah is doing for you in the spirit. But if you lose faith, you'll never see what Yah was trying to accomplish in your life. Mm -hmm. Now, after she humbles herself, what happens? Chapter 4. The Gospel of James, chapter 4. And behold, an angel of Yehovah appeared, saying unto her, Kana, Kana, Yehovah hath hearkened unto thy prayer, and thou shalt conceive and bear. And thy seed shall be spoken of in, in the whole world. world. So now as all of Israel, the 12 tribes were disparaging her and speaking evil about her, even though she was righteous, now the whole world is going to speak about her and the special child that Yah is going to give unto her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Cana said, as Jehovah my Elohim liveth, if I bring forth either male or female, I will bring it for a gift unto Yehovah, my Elohim, and it shall be ministering unto him all the days of its life. So the first thing that she's willing to do is she's willing to take this and give it back to the Most High. Hallelujah. She's willing to sacrifice and give it right back into the hands of Yah. And behold, there came two messengers saying unto her, Behold, Jehoiah queen, thy husband, cometh with his flock. So now she finds out right after that, her husband's alive. And she thought he was dead. Go ahead. For an angel of Jehoiah came down unto him saying, Jehoiah queen, Jehoiah queen. Yahweh Elohim hath hearkened unto thy prayer. Get thee down hence, for behold, thy wife Kana hath conceived. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And didn't know that whole time she was pregnant. Mm, mm, mm. He's there crying in the wilderness and she's already pregnant. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <praise laughs> <God>. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 3. And Jehoiah queen sat him down and called his herdsmen, saying, Bring me hither ten lambs without blemish and without spot. The first thing he does, the same thing. He makes an offering. When we make offerings in our time of tribulation, they're magnified a hundredfold. Go ahead. And they shall be for Jehovah thy Elohim. And bring me twelve tender calves, and they shall be for the priest and for the assembly of the elders, and a hundred kids for the whole people. So the same people who mocked them and disparaged them and spoke ill, they still gave back to these same people. <laughs> Pray for those who despitefully use you. The flesh against the spirit. Go ahead. Verse 4. And behold, Jehoiah queen came with his flocks, and Cana stood at the gate, and saw Jehoiah queen coming, and ran and hung upon his neck, saying, Now I know that Jehovah Elohim hath greatly blessed me. For behold, the widow is no more a widow. Hallelujah. And she that was childless shall conceive. Hallelujah. Who is she going to conceive? Let's go. And Jehoiah queen rested the first day in his house. Let's go. Chapter 5. <laughs> Who is this? And on the morrow he offered his gift, saying in himself, If Jehovah Elohim be reconciled unto me, the plate that is upon the forehead of the priest will make it manifest unto me. The high priest has a golden head band that has a name of Yah written on it. It says, Kwadosh la Yehoah, holy unto Yehoah. So the high priest is supposed to be holy and set apart. So this headpiece is made of pure gold. So he says, when I go before this high priest and I see this high priest, I'm going to be able to see my reflection in the gold that is on the high priest's headband. 
So when we look at something that's holy, it should reflect upon us and we should consider ourselves. Go ahead. When we look on the name of Yah, because that's what it is, Kwadosh La Yehoah, when we look upon that name, it should reflect upon ourselves while we walk in holy. And Yehoiakim offered his gifts and looked earnestly upon the plate of the priest when he went up unto the altar of the Adonai, and he saw no sin in himself. Mm. And Yehoiakim said, Now know I that Yehoah is become... Wait, wait, let's read that again. And Yehoiakim offered... His gifts, gifts and, and looked look earnestly upon, upon the plate, plate of, of the priest when he went up unto the altar of Adonai, and, and he saw no, no sin in himself. himself. So all of this tribulation happened to him, even though he had no sin in himself. These are things to consider in your walk through life. When you're trying your best, when you're walking in faith and you're seeking the most high. Yet sometimes you, you find yourself in an undesirable situation. Are you faithful? Do you seek Yah that much more? When you examine yourself and re-examine yourself, do you find sin there or do you find no sin there? This is what we have to strive for. So when he went up unto the altar of Adonai, and he saw no sin in himself. So all of these things happened to him because that was the flesh warring against his spirit. But Yah was going to do the opposite. And Jehoiakim said, Now know I that Yehovah is become propitious unto me and hath forgiven all my sins. Hallelujah. And he went down from the temple of Yehovah justified, justified. And went unto his house. And her months were fulfilled. And in the ninth month, Kana brought forth. And she said unto the midwife, What have I brought forth? And she said, A, a female. female. When y'all blesses you with a daughter, are you going to be dissatisfied? No. There's some in Israel who will be like, No, I don't want no daughters. Now, this great blessing was a daughter and the highest daughter of all women who lived. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read. And she said a female. And Kana said, My soul is depressed this day. Magnified. Oh, magnified. Magnified. <laughs> 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 My soul is magnified this day. And she laid herself down, and when the days were fulfilled, Kana purified herself and gave suck to the child and called her name Miriam or Mary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and this is how Yehoshua's mother was conceived and born. How fitting. We'll read a little more. All right, we are in the Gospel of James, chapter 6. And day by day, the child waxed strong, and when she was six months old, her mother stood her upon the ground to try if she would stand. And she walked seven steps and returned to her bosom. Holy, wow. from the very beginning. And she caught her up, saying, As Jehovah my Elohim liveth, thou shalt walk no more upon this ground until I bring thee into the temple of Jehovah. The same place when they went to bring their offerings, everyone said, Your offerings are not fit here. Now Yah gave them the greatest woman that ever lived, and they offered her back to Yah, and she dwelt in the temple. How about that? Hallelujah. And she made a sanctuary in her bedchamber and suffered nothing common or unclean to pass through it. And she called for the daughters of the Hebrews that were undefiled, and they carried her hither and thither. Mm. Wow. And the first year of the child was fulfilled, and Jehoiakim made a great feast 
and bade the priests and the scribes and the assembly of the elders and of the whole people of Israel. And Jehoiakim brought the child to the priests, and they blessed her, saying, O Elohim of our fathers, bless this child and give her a name renowned forever among all generations. Amen. And all the people said, So, so be it, so, so be it. it. Amen. Amen. And he brought her to the high priest, and they blessed her, saying, O Elohim of the high places, look upon this child and bless her with the last blessings, which hath no successor. And her mother caught her up in the sanctuary of her bedchamber and gave her suck. And Kana made a song unto Yahweh Elohim. Her mourning was turned into singing. I will sing a hymn unto Yehoah, my Elohim, Amen. because he hath visited me and taken away from me the reproach of mine enemies. Mm. And Yehoah hath given me a fruit of his righteousness, single and manifold before him. This is why Joseph in the New Testament, Mary's husband, has two genealogies. He is the son of Solomon, son of David. He comes from that lineage, and that's given in the book of Matthew. But in the book of Luke, he descends from Nathan, the son of David. So the reason why that is, is because Yehoia queen and Hana had no son. So the inheritance that would have gone to marry, now Yosef becomes a son, so to speak, for Yehoiah Queen and Hannah. Hmm. So he continues that lineage as well. Hmm. And that's why we have two genealogies. One from Yosef, son of Solomon, and then one saying Yosef, son of Nathan, the son of David. Just like the laws of the daughters of Zelophehad in the book of Numbers, when Yosef married Miriam, he inherited this lineage as well. Mm -hmm. So he had both lineages. Mm -hmm. And that's what you can't understand when you start saying mm -hmm. that the Messiah was a natural child mm -hmm. of Joseph. And that's why they don't get it. Mm -hmm. Continuing in verse 3. Right. Who shall declare unto the sons of Reuben that cannot give it up? Reuben was coming down hard. Now they got to... Eat they words. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hearken, hearken, ye twelve tribes of Israel, that Kanah giveth suck. And she laid the child to rest in the bedchamber of her sanctuary, and went forth and ministered unto them. And when the feast was ended, they got them down rejoicing and glorifying the Elohim of Israel. Hallelujah. So Yah turned their great sorrow into great joy and gladness. Hallelujah. So the war between the flesh and the spirit, when we are faithful and we are in obedient throughout our trials and our tribulations, what it is that we're experiencing in the flesh is the opposite of what Yah is going to accomplish for us in the spirit. There's so many stories that we have. I have so many listed here. Adam, Joseph, Abraham, Sarah, David, Hannah, Paul, Peter, Mary Magdalene, Yehoshua, Hamashiach, of course. Let's get to your whole show and then we'll wrap it up. I wanted to wrap it up now, but we got to talk about the Messiah who was crucified, though he was without sin. Let's go to um, the Gospel of Bar no, Nicodemus. Yehoshua was killed on the cross in the flesh so that he can give life to all who believe. Let me just... These are just some of my notes on this. Adam had to suffer so that he can make way for the second Adam. And through the disobedience of one came the salvation of many. Joseph was sold into bondage as a slave, but it was really that Yah wanted to make him king. Abraham had no heir. And he prayed to the father 
And Yah said unto him, You're going to be a father of many nations. Your name is no longer Abram, but Abraham, father of a multitude. Sarah was barren for her to conceive the child of promise. Dawi was forsaken and alone, but it was really that in the spirit he was going to unite the 12 tribes of Israel. We just talked about Hana. Paul killed Stephen. But later on, Paul was used to raise the dead. Peter denied Yehoshua three times. That was a moment of weakness for him. But right before the Last Supper, Yehoshua said, you're going to deny me thrice. But when you turn back, strengthen your brothers. So in his moment of weakness, he denied Yehoshua, but it was for him to strengthen the rest of the apostles. Mary Magdalene was saved from death so that she could anoint Yehoshua for his death. She was saved from death so that she could anoint Yehoshua for his. And when she anointed Yehoshua for his death, even the apostles were upset with her. And they still told her she was not worthy. But Yehoshua is so different. So when you're following your path, you can't worry about what other people think. We, we can't accomplish anything significant in our lives if we always concern about how others feel and think about it. Because when you succeed and y'all blesses you and you prosper, most of them same people are going to come back around like they supported you anyway. They're going to pretend like they always had your back. And Moses, who was slow of speech, y'all use his mouth to confront Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. And the one who was slow of speech brought forth the Torah. He spoke the law, statutes, and commandments that we still live by to this very day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just see this final deliverance that Yehoshua did. He had to die in order to defeat death. Let's go to the Gospel of Nicodemus. Gospel of Nicodemus, chapter 22. To me, this is like the greatest gospel. To be able to see what Yehoshua did when he went in hell. We know he went there, but this shows what he accomplished and how he did it. That's why this book is included in Hebrew the last scriptures. We are in the Gospel of Nicodemus, chapter 22, beginning at verse 1. When Sheol and death and the wicked ministers saw that they were stricken with fear, they and their cruel officers at the sight of the brightness of so great light in their own realm. Imagine hell being a dark and desolate place that it is, and the great light appears in the middle of hell. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a surprise. Seeing Hamashiach of a sudden in their abode. All of a sudden, Yehoshua is in hell. And they cried out, saying, We are overcome by thee. Duh. Who art thou? Y'all about to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Who art thou that art sent by Yehovah for confusion? For our confusion. Who art thou that without all damage of corruption and with the signs of thy majesty, unblemished, unblemished, dost in wrath condemn our power? Who art thou 
that art so great and so small, both humble and exalted. Humble and exalted. He went down and descended into hell. That's what Jared means, to descend. He descended into hell against giants. Satan is a giant. The Nephilim, the fallen angels are giants. Yehoshua could manifest himself that way if he so, so choose, but he chose to come down there in, a, in, in, a, in a smaller stature than them to confound them, and that's the significance of the son of David. The son of David warred against Goliath in the spirit. Go ahead. Who art thou that art so great and so small, both humble, humble and, and exalted, exalted. Mm. both soldier and, and commander, commander, a marvelous warrior in the shape of a bondsman. And a bondsman. You are a warrior, a king, and a slave. Everything that all of the, everyone we just read about, that's what he was. He was hated and then loved. He was killed and then he gave life. He was lied on, yet he is the truth. And a king of glory, dead and living. He dead, he died, but yet he's alive. How could this be? Whom the cross bears slain upon it. Thou that didst lie dead in the sepulchre has come down unto us living and at thy Hold death. Hold on one second. You died on the cross and now you come down to hell alive. In order to defeat death, he had to go to hell. And to go to hell, you got to die. But they couldn't perceive that. And a king of glory, dead and living, whom the cross bears slain upon it. Thou that didst lie dead in the sepulchre has come down unto us living, and at thy death all creation quaked, and all the stars were shaken, and thou hast become free among the dead, and dost rout our legion. Mm, 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 mm. Go ahead. Who art thou that settest free the prisoners? that are held bound by original sin and restores them unto their former liberty. Who art thou that sheddest thy, divi thy divine and bright light upon them that were blinded with the darkness of their sins? After the same manner, all the legions of, the, of devils were stricken with like fear. Now they're tormenting all souls with all power and authority to harm all these souls Save for those who are in Abraham's bosom. Mm -hmm. And now they're tormented and afflicted. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Hallelujah. This was the one area in all of creation that Yah did not have dominion over. Yet he had dominion over it. But in order to save the righteous, Satan had to have dominion. Yah had dominion over it too, in which he could have destroyed Satan. But to do that, he would have had to destroy the souls of the righteous who were in Abraham's bosom. So in order for Yah to be perfect and be without uh, blame, because Satan would say, well, how could you destroy me and my angels? These have sinned too. So he would have had to destroy Adam and all of the righteous. Or he would be unjust. And that was the game that Satan was betting on. You can't harm me because I have all of these souls down here. So if you destroy me, you have to destroy these righteous souls as well. And Satan was betting on that. Until Yehoshua supplanted him. Hallelujah. 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 Go ahead. After the same manner, all the legions of devils were stricken with like fear and cried out all together in the terror of their confusion, saying, What art thou, Yehoshua? A man so mighty and bright in majesty, so excellent without spot and clean from sin. Mm. For that world of earth, which hath been always subject unto us until now. So, Satan usurped authority from Adam. So, from that time until Yehoshua went down there, they had command of it. Mm -hmm. And did pay tribute to our prophet 
hath never sent unto us a dead man like thee, nor ever dispatched such a gift unto Sheol. Who then art thou that so fearlessly enters our borders, and not only fearest not our torments, but besides, is saith to bear away all men out of our bonds? Peradventure, thou art that Yehoshua, of whom Satan our prince said, that by thy death of the cross thou shouldest receive the dominion of the world. Then the whole, world. the whole world. Then did the King of Glory in His Majesty trample, trample upon, upon death. death. He trampled upon the spirit of death, but he had to die to do it. Right. So it was the opposite. It looked like in the flesh Yahushua was defeated by being killed, but he got killed to defeat the killer. Go ahead. Then did the king of glory in his majesty trample upon death. Behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall harm you. Amen. And laid hold on Satan the prince. He grabbed Satan by the throat. <laughs> and drew and delivered him unto the power of Sheol. And delivers him to Azazel, Abaddon the destroyer. Mm -hmm. And drew Adam to him unto his own brightness. Mm -hmm. And then draws Adam and all of the righteous saints unto him at the same time. Let's read. Mm -hmm. wow. Hallelujah. Chapter 23. Then Sheol receiving Satan the prince. Then Azazel or Abaddon starts to a torment and afflict Satan. The chief angel of the hell starts to afflict the devil. He starts to whip and torment Satan wow. at the command of the Most High Son, Yehoshua HaMashiach. Praise Go ahead. Then Sheol, receiving Satan the prince, with sore reproach, said unto him, O prince of perdition and chief of destruction, Baal, Zebub, the scorn of angels and the spitting of the righteous, why wouldst thou do this? You were a fool to kill Yehoshua. <laughs> <laughs> thou wouldst crucify the king of glory and, and at his decease, his decease this promised us great spoils of, of his death. death. You thought y'all were going to afflict Yehoshua forever in hell. Mm -hmm. You idiot. <laughs> Go ahead. Like a fool, thou mm. knewest not what thou didst. For behold, now this Yehoshua put him to flight by the brightness of his majesty all the darkness of death, mm. and hath broken the strong depths of the prisons and let out the prisoners. Mm. He came to set the captives free. Hallelujah. And loose them that were bound. And all that were singing in our torments do we sighing in our torments. Mm -hmm. Oh, sighing, excuse me. Sighing in their torments do rejoice against us. And at their prayers, our dominions are vanquished and our realms conquered. And now no nation of men feareth us anymore. Now the prisoners in hell aren't afraid of the devil when Yehoshua was down there. Wow. And beside this, the dead, which were never wont to be proud, triumph over us. And the captives, which never could be joyful, do threaten us. O Prince Satan, father of all the wicked and ungodly and renegades, wherefore wouldst thou do this? That they that from the beginning until now have despaired of life and salvation, now is none of their wanton rulings heard, neither doth any groan from them sound groan from them sound in our ears, mm -hmm. nor is there any sign of tears wow. upon the face of any of them. <coughs> o Prince Satan, holder of the keys of hell, those thy riches which thou hadst gained by the tree of transgression. Mm -hmm. And the losing of the garden of Eden, thou hast lost by, by the, the tree, tree of the cross. Of the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
and all mm -hmm. thy gladness hath perished. When thou didst hang up Hamashiach Yehoshua, the king of glory, mm -hmm. thou, thou wrought against thyself and against me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Against me. Mm -hmm. Henceforth. Henceforth. Thou shalt know what eternal torments and infinite pains thou art to suffer in, in my keeping, keeping forever. forever. So now Abaddon gets to destroy and punish the devil. Amazing. Who else could accomplish that? Could Michael the archangel, as great as he is, could he accomplish that? No. Not even him. Only one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Old Prince Satan, author of death, and head of all pride, thou oughtest first to have sought out matter of evil in this Yehoshua. Wherefore didst thou adventure without cause to crucify him unjustly, against whom thou fondest no blame, and to bring into our realm mm. the innocent and righteous one, and to lose the guilty and the ungodly and the unrighteous of the whole world. That's just what it said. Through one man's obedience mm -hmm. gave everyone life. That's what Paul was talking about. This right here. Through one man's sin came death to everyone. Through all man's through one man's obedience came life to all who believe. And when Sheol has spoken thus unto Satan the prince, then said the king of glory unto Sheol, Satan the prince shall be in thy power unto all ages in, in the stead, stead of, of Adam, Adam and, and his, his children. children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even those that are my righteous ones. And Adonai stretching forth his hand, said, Behold the hand, behold the nail. Come unto me, all of you, my saints, he which bear the my tree. image and likeness. Ye that by the tree and the devil and death were condemned, behold now the, the devil, devil and, and death, death condemned, condemned by, by the, the tree. tree. Hallelujah. 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 And forthwith all the saints were gathered in one under the hand of Adonai. Amen. And Adonai holding the right hand of Adam. Now I'm going to rescue Adam as I promised him. Mm -hmm. Said unto him, Shalom be unto thee with all thy children that are my righteous ones. But Adam casting himself at the knees of Adonai and treated him with tears and beseechings mm. and with a loud voice. I will magnify thee, O Adonai, for thou hast set me up and not made my, my foes to triumph, triumph over, over me. me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. O Adonai, my Elohim, I cried unto thee. And thou hast healed me. Adonai, thou, ha thou hast brought my soul out of hell. Mm. Thou hast delivered me from them that go down to the pit. Mm. Sing praises unto Yehovah, all ye saints of his, and give thanks unto him for the remembrance of his holiness. Mm -hmm. For there is wrath in his indignation, and life is in his good pleasure. In like manner, all the saints of Elohim. All of the children of Adam who were righteous in, in that hell. They all bowed down to Yahushua. Amen. Kneel and cast themselves at the feet of Adonai, saying with one accord, Thou, thou art come, O Redeemer of the world, world that, that which thou didst foretell by the Torah and by thy prophets, that hast thou accomplished indeed. Thou hast redeemed the living by thy cross, and by the death of the cross, thou hast come down unto us, that thou mightest save us out of hell and death through thy majesty. O Adonai, like as thou hast set up the name of thy glory in the heavens, and set up thy cross for a token of redemption upon the earth, so Adonai set thou up the sign of the victory of thy cross in hell, that death may have no more dominion. Amen. Adonai stretched forth his hand. And Adonai stretched forth his hand and made the sign of the cross over Adam and over all his saints. And he took the right hand of Adam and went up out of hell. And all the saints followed him. 
They did hold then they, did holy that we cry aloud and say, Sing they unto Yahweh a new song, for he have done marvelous things. His, his right hand hath brought salvation for him and his holy arm. Yahweh hath made known his saving health before the faith of all nations hath he revealed his righteousness. And the whole multitude of the saints answered, saying, Such honor have all his saints. Amen. Amen. That's Psalm 148. Mm -hmm. This honor have all his saints. Mm -hmm. That made me think about um, about Moses. I think in um, what's that Jude where mm -hmm. it say Mikael how went yes. and rebuked him and um, you know certain righteous like really really righteous prophet Yahuwah came to God came you know and, and it made me think on the mount when they when he transfigured himself who had came. Moses. It was Moses and uh, was it Elijah? Elijah. Mm -hmm. And Elijah went up in the world and he never That's died. Right. That's right. So, Enoch. Mm -hmm. We know Enoch went up too, which I think are the two witnesses. Mm -hmm. in the the two witnesses, mm -hmm. right? It, it's, it's crazy. And then I was thinking, like, I don't. He had to been down there for a long time. Yeah. 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 a long time. He was down there a long time. And 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 you know, I'm thinking like maybe because I know what Enoch. You know, Enoch was shown the beginning to the end. Mm -hmm. So he's seen all sectors That's right. of, the, mm. of the earth. Yes. And um, I know Enoch can talk about, I'm thinking, maybe in this time when Yahushua did that, is that when he placed his angels over mm -hmm. the ground. Mm -hmm. It's because it talked about how Uriel and some of them right. was the ones over. You know, we don't know the timeline exactly because he just going right but as you read you can kind of put certain things mm -hmm. together that's right and, and all of this story is summed up only one time in one verse i think in the book of matthew and this is so amazing but it just says when Yehoshua went down uh when Yehoshua was crucified on the cross then it said then the saints of the the living came out of their graves, mm -hmm. and that's all it says. That's it. Right. This is how it happened. Yes. That's, it. that's why, to me, this is like one of the greatest gospels to see what Yahushua did, mm -hmm. and there's so much more to this, mm -hmm. you know. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah! Blessed be the name of the Most High. Hallelujah. 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 The war of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Mighty is our Savior. Blessed be thy name, Jehovah God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in Yehoshua's name. We thank you for your mighty right hand as you saved all the souls of the righteous and the just. And you kept your covenant and your promise even down to us in this generation. Praying we're all found worthy to be delivered, to be saved by your right hand, Moses. Yeah. Save us as you saved them, Adam, and the descendants of the just and the righteous. Save us as well. Count us worthy, worthy to be risen up in the kingdom of of heaven. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory in Yehoshua's name. Hallelujah. Amen. Shabbat Shalom family. Um, we wanted to take time out to thank you guys for joining us um, during this pace of Passover season and during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Um, we thank you for your continuous support and your donations and your alms and your offering. Uh, we're in prayer for you guys. Um, we wish you the best during this season. Um, do know that you can go, um, after the sun goes down, after the end of Shabbat, you can go to um, the website at HebrewsInTheLightScriptures.com to support. And you can uh, get any of the books that you need for your library. The, um, I've got some down here. Let me show you. Here's the gold. Okay, yeah, that's the um, We have the His Word Gold. And it's written for Hebrews, by Hebrews. Amen. Oh, yeah. The only of its kind. Um, all the names are translated back to the original Hebrew names. Um, so you can do that after the sun goes down. Also, um, you can support the ministry at Cash App at Dollar Sign Kai Yeshua. You can support the ministry. Um, you can go to the website at kaiyeshua.com forward slash tithes and offerings. Click on the yellow donate button, and however the Most High Yah um, uses you, uh, moves your heart to support so that the word can continue to go forth to feed the sheep. Um, and you can also do that at Zale at kayashua at gmail.com. 
We love you, family. We're so grateful that you guys take your time out to spend your Shabbats with us week after week. Happy Resurrection Day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Um, amen. And one more thing. Uh, tomorrow starts the first day of the counting of the Omer. Um, so tomorrow would be Aviv the 18th, and we start counting the Omer. That is the 50 days leading up to the Feast of Pentecost, or Shavuot. I mean, yeah, Shavuot, Feast of, Ta Feast of Weeks. Hallelujah. And that's when the Most High poured out the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. So from this time, when Yehoshua resurrected, 50 days after that, the gifts of the Holy Spirit were poured out upon the apostles and the disciples of Yehoshua. So we begin our counting tomorrow, which will be, again, Aviv the 18th. May the Most High bless you. Thank you for joining us this Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.